In this video, I'm going to share with you the 10 biggest mistakes that writers make when writing their scenes. The scene is the lifeblood of your story. You have to be able to write a well-paced, compelling scene that pulls the reader all the way through to the end and wondering what happens next. Because a book is just a stack of a bunch of scenes that tell the full story. So if you can't write a compelling scene that keeps your reader reading, they're never going to get all the way through your book. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO and publisher at StoryGrid. And everything in this video is based on the writing and editing experience of my partner, Sean Coyne, who created StoryGrid. And he's been doing this for over 30 years, working with hundreds and hundreds of writers. And here at StoryGrid, we've been working with thousands of writers to help them build the skills, write a book, and leave a legacy. And over and over and over, we see writers making the same 10 mistakes when writing their scenes. I want to show you what these 10 mistakes are and how you can avoid them in writing your scenes. The first mistake that we see writers make is not having anything actually change in their scene. Stories are about change. We have to have something change from the beginning to the end of the scene. Otherwise, there's no reason for that scene to be in your story. Now to track those changes, we have the five commandments of storytelling. You have to have an inciting incident, a turning point, a crisis, a climax, and a resolution in every single scene. If you're missing any of those, then you don't have the right level of change in your story and something is broken in your scene. The second problem that we see in scenes is that there's no clear genre. Now, we said that something has to change in your scene. So what has to change? you have to have a value shift in your scene. Now, if you want to dive into genre, we have a video all about genre. You can go more into that. It's down in the description. But genre is all about a fundamental life value that has to change in your story and that has to change at the scene level too. I should be able to read your scene and know what your whole story is about because a value shifted in that scene. So we have to see what genre your story is about in each scene that you write. The third mistake we see writers make is that the genre changes within a scene. And so the value shift doesn't stay consistent throughout the scene, which means it kind of bounces all over the place. And I've seen scenes that go like this, where they start as a love story and then move to a crime story and then move to an action story. And the writer thinks, well, a bunch of stuff changed, but it was a bunch of random stuff. And this makes the reader feel lost in your book. So you have to be really clear about what your value change is and keep it consistent throughout the entire scene. So the third problem is you have to keep your genre consistent. Problem number four is that the scene starts too early. A lot of times writers just love to dump a bunch of stuff into the story and start talking about all kinds of things before we get to the actual story. Now remember, you have to have all five commandments and the first commandment is an inciting incident. So we gotta have that inciting incident early in the scene. If you put too much preamble before that inciting incident, the reader gets lost. They don't know what's going on and what they should be paying attention to. So you start the scene too early. We've gotta make sure that inciting incident is close to the beginning of the scene so that the reader knows what's going on and what they're supposed to be paying attention to. The next problem we see is unclear objects of desire. Every character in your story, especially the protagonist, but all of the active characters in your scene need to have a clear object of desire, something that they want, something they're trying to get in that scene. And those objects of desire have to be against each other. So we can't have every character in your story wanting the same thing or there's no conflict. So I have to have really clear objects of desire. I should be able to know the one thing each of the active characters in your scene want and I can tell that they're against each other and they're not fully in line. Problem number six is that the characters act in an inconsistent way. We need to see the characters in your story acting consistently with who they are. That doesn't mean random things can't happen. It doesn't mean your characters can't freak out at some point. But in general, your characters need to act in a consistent manner. This is how people act in real life. We know the people in our life really well, and we can usually guess what will happen and what they will do if they're put under stress, if something surprises them, if something scares them. And so we have to know our characters well enough so that we can make sure that they're acting consistently. So a lot of things that we see in a scene is that the characters start acting inconsistently. That means the reader can't actually keep track of who these people are 
It pulls them out of the story and they feel like it's not a believable story. So we got to make sure we're really clear on who our characters are and how they act throughout the story. Problem number seven, boring or plot driven dialogue. So you have to be really careful with your dialogue to make sure that it doesn't slip into what we call a tune dialogue. So a tune dialogue is where the characters are just kind of saying the same thing back and forth, right? So you would never read in a good book something like, hey, how's it going? Pretty good, how about you? Oh, I'm doing good, how's the family? They're pretty good, how about you? How's your family, right? That's that's boring, that's where they're just at the same level. So this is where our objects of desire show up for our characters. When they're having dialogue interchanges, they need to both be trying to get what they want, and that's where the tension and the misattunement comes. Cut out all of the stuff where it's all on the same level, that's getting rid of the boring stuff. The other thing that we see is when dialogue is clearly there just to drive the momentum of the plot. That, again, pulls the reader out of the story, makes them feel like, oh, this isn't real life. We need to make sure that the dialogue is clear, it's moving the story forward, but it's not there specifically just to keep the plot going. Problem number eight is the protagonist is too competent. The whole point of a story is to show what happens when a protagonist's life is thrown off balance and they can't find their way back to the way things were. What we see a lot of times in scenes is that the writer just kind of lets their protagonist figure problems out pretty easily. So a problem comes up and they solve it. Then another problem comes up and they solve that one too. And they just kind of competently move through the story. We need to see your protagonist struggling, not knowing what to do, hitting something, hitting that all is lost moment. We need to see them reach a point in every single scene where they don't know what to do and they're forced to make a new decision. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have smart protagonists. Of course, there are wonderful protagonists that are brilliant ones, Sherlock Holmes, right? But that doesn't mean they know everything. And the whole point of your story is to put them in situations where they don't know what to do. So make sure you are not creating a situation where your protagonist is being presented with problems that they too easily solve. They should not be too competent for your story. Number nine is when the writer wants to give lots of information to their reader and so they info dump. They just take lots and lots of exposition, give them lots of backstory, lots of setting information, and just load the reader down with a bunch of information at once. If you give all of the information to your reader at once, they won't be able to sift through to know what's important, what's not important, what they need to remember, what they don't need to remember, and they're gonna just try to get through it because they wanna get back to the action, the actual story, not just a list of information. So here at StoryGrid, we recommend this idea of minimum viable exposition. Give your reader just enough information so you can get back to telling the story. That is the side that you should err on, is give them the minimum amount of information they need to feel like they know where they are at in your story, and then keep going. Do not give lots and lots of information all at once that the reader doesn't need to know right now in your story in order to keep track of what's going on. Now, the 10th and final problem that we see in scene writing is one I even hesitate to bring up, and that is having an undeveloped setting. Because as soon as I say that writers sometimes have an undeveloped setting, all of you that like to info dump are going to use it as an excuse to put loads and loads of information about your world building in every single scene. That is not what I'm talking about here. We have to make sure that we do have a developed setting so that your reader doesn't get lost, they can picture where your people are in your world and what's going on around them, but we don't wanna give them too little information because we're just trying to get the action going. So we have to develop the setting to that sweet spot where a reader can locate the characters in the world, they know what's going on in the world, while at the same time, you're not loading them down with tons and tons of information that they don't need. That is the 10 biggest mistakes that we see at StoryGrid that writers make in creating their scenes. And what we found is if you clean up and fix these mistakes, you're going to be writing much better paced scenes that are well-crafted and pulling your reader all the way to the end and leave them asking what happens next. So they turn that page and read your next scene. If you want more information on how to keep leveling up your scene writing, I recommend you go to storygrid.com. We have tons of free resources there, articles, our email newsletter. We have lots of great stuff there. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell to make sure you get notified of all the future videos that we come out with. I also put a lot of great links down in the description to help you 
with next steps with your own writing. But thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.